So we are live. I want to welcome everybody to the Drag Coverage Show with TJ. Drag Coverage Show with TJ. Uh, it is a live stream. We're live. We're going to be live on several platforms. But I've kicked this idea around for quite a while now, for a couple of years now. And I figured, why not just pull the trigger and do this live show? It's not going to, this not, it never went away. This idea never went away. So I, I'm going to the million dollar race. Jenny Folk asked me to be the announcer at the million dollar race. And lo and behold, a no box racer, Donnie Hager, wins a million. And I said to myself, what a better, there's no better time to start a live drag coverage show than right now when history in the making with the first no box winner to ever win a million dollar drag race. So the pressure was on at that point, and I said, I got to start the live show now. This is a perfect opportunity. But we plan on having several different uh, categories. As you know, at Drag Coverage, we cover pretty much everything you could possibly think of in drag racing, from street racing. We had something uh, last week about cruising the coast, uh, PDRA, IHRA, and HRA. And our biggest fan base is local drag racing. That was the whole goal of starting Drag Coverage was to promote local drag racing and give the local racer a big platform to really shine. But I'm going to shut up. Uh, so this drag cover show is I, I'm, it's probably the least professional show out of any drag racing show. You'll probably hear the dog barking in the background, people walking in. We'll try to prevent that. But let's get started. Let's get started. I would like to welcome to the show the first ever drag cover show with TJ, first ever live show. I would like to welcome the 28th annual Mickey Thompson uh, Million Dollar Race winner, Donnie Hager. Donnie, how's it going, man? Hey, TJ. Appreciate you having me on here. Oh, yeah. I'm glad you could join. I was literally talking about dogs maybe barking. <laughs> literally, my dog barks right as I say that. <laughs> that's right. Yep. I got my dog here, too. So hopefully, hopefully that's not the case, but... Well, man, yeah. welcome to the show, dude. I feel like I should give you another round of applause here after <laughs> I've, it's been a few weeks since I've seen you, and yeah. it's the first time really since we've seen each other. What have you, I, what have you been up to? Kind of like the first time in the interview when you and, you and I are standing in the winner circle. I'm like, I'm speechless, don't know what to say. I yep. feel like that right now. What have you been up to, dude? Yeah, I feel like it's been a whirlwind. You know, I've been uh, right back at it, racing, working. You know, I really haven't had a day off, um, you know, but uh, just same old stuff, same, same stuff. Uh, I don't have any plans this weekend, so maybe I'll uh, reflect a little bit more on what happened. <laughs> now, when you say you haven't had a day off, it sounds like a pretty tough job you've got there. Uh, what kind of, I mean, what kind of career? You haven't had a day off? So I'm guessing you won the million dollar drag race, but you still had to go and work the next day. That's right. Well, when I got back Monday, yeah, I'm a firefighter EMT. Okay. So, yep. I do 24 hour shifts. So, you know, when I do get a day off, sometimes that consists of sleeping the next day, <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, yeah. So this weekend I don't have any plans. So, you know, I'm going to reflect on what I did and uh, maybe it'll sink in. So this is really your first time off since the race is what you're saying? That's right. Right oh, back. Wow. So you're a hero when it comes to for all the no box races. You're a hero for all the open trailer races. You're the hero for all the old truck tow vehicle races. And you an EMT. Man, I tell you what, you're winning everybody over right now. Speaking of, I've got so many questions to ask you, dude. So I Yeah. Speak, I, I never would have thought. It's so it's so surreal the spotlight I got, you know. Something I always dreamed of, obviously winning a race of this magnitude and uh it it's just uh it's i don't know it's i can't believe it that's it's awesome two weeks later I, I it's like pinch me i'm dreaming and it and it's unreal it really makes me feel good that even two weeks later you're just or two or three weeks later however many weeks the million's been i've lost yeah. track you're just as humble as you were the day you won it uh, you're probably the I was thinking, I said, this guy's really, really laid back in the winter circle. You were like, yeah. And then when you told me you only slept one hour before that. But before we get started, let's, I'm all over the place right now. But before we get started, I want to kind of rewind for all the listeners because we got a lot of people watching and a lot of people have been excited to, to have you on the show. 
But uh, so let's start back. I want to start from the beginning because I got some questions that I want to ask. And but I also got some questions, several questions that the viewers would like to uh, ask you as well. If I don't know if you saw the post on drag coverage. Yeah, but, uh, yeah a couple of the questions prepared a little bit. Maybe not. I was all. wondering if you were going to do that. Smart man there. Very smart. I would have done the same thing. I was thinking that. But before we even get started, let's rewind and start over because I've heard different, you know, different things. Uh, that you only showed up to race on Saturday, and 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 so kind of, were you there earlier that week? So first of all, for those that are just tuning in, Donnie Hager he won the 28th annual Mickey Thompson Million Dollar Drag Race, arguably the most historic, prestigious bracket race in the world, and he uh, he showed up on Saturday and won in a no box car, a Vega that does not have a camshaft. By the way, it's, it sounds like a, a a truck motor, but yeah. It but, is, but, it but, is. but rewind on us. Gas. So, on gas, pump gas too. <laughs> uh, no, a one twelve. I probably could get away with it. <laughs> yeah, but rewind. When did you show up? <clears throat> yeah, so I left. Uh, I left Thursday night. So the million was on Friday, and uh, I left Thursday night. Got there Friday morning in the middle of the uh, the one and only time trial, and. That's when I got there Friday. Didn't decide to go on Thursday. I was playing around with the idea of going. And uh, my dad my dad basically convinced me I should go. So Right. And I assume you had been saving all year long to for this race. You've been I, I some people had said yeah. you had been saving for it. Some no, people had I said you had been saving all year long for it, or at least quite a while for this race. I was fortunate enough to win a five grander back in August, so I saved all that money and, and I and I brought all of that with me to this race and used that towards the uh, entry and everything else. Oh, great! And so you get there Friday. You've been driving all night. How, how many hours have you been up? Yeah, so I probably got three hours of sleep max. I would say so. I left, you know, Thursday about eight p.m. Got to Illinois somewhere, middle of nowhere, and, and pulled over <laughs> on the side of the highway, or, you know, on the off-ramp, and slept in my truck. And uh, not the best sleep, probably not the best strategy either, but uh, I guess it worked out. And woke up, you know, about 6 a.m. I had a couple hours to go and uh, arrived to St. Louis about 8.30 in the morning. And, uh, you know, rest is history. I understand that. So when was the when did the tent sleeping happen? Everybody said you slept in a tent. Did you actually sleep but in a tent? But I never was. I never slept in the tent. I brought the tent with me, and you know I had intentions of sleeping in it, but uh, you know I never slept. <laughs> Honestly, because <laughs> the final was at three thirty in the morning, and uh, you know the, the the last fifty grander was in like four hours first round, and there's no way I could sleep. I just won the million, you know. Right. So I understand that. That's all. Awesome. Stayed in my truck. That was it. Did you win the, uh, so, so you get there that morning, you make your time trial, your one and only time trial of which I missed that morning, which let's, that's a whole different subject. I missed the time trial. I'm always late. I, I, I went up there with the dragsters. Yeah. I, I missed my time trial. You know, they the folk, you. no, they won't let, they didn't let you make the time trial this. So this year, yeah, I know. Right. So this year, uh, Jennifer, and the folk promotions wanted to encourage everybody to get their time trial on time so we could finish. So right. door cars had to make time trials with door cars and dragsters had to make time with drag time trials with dragsters. So I fire my car up. I'm like, I'm going to make my million time trial. I'm rolling up there and I roll up and I think it's Dave Conley's dad. He like stops me or, and, and, and weighs me down. And I said, Hey, what's up, dude. I'm about to make my time trial here. Get out of my way. I'm literally about to run him over. He goes, Whoa, you can't make a time trial. He says, Late. you have to make a time trial with the dragsters. So I went up there blindly, which showed during the race uh, and made my time trial. But, yeah, I didn't even make a time trial so, that morning. But you made a time so, trial. Did you Did you have to buy back after the first round? No, fortunately didn't have to buy back. Got a time trial in. Uh, Matt Daddis told me, uh, you know, gave me a little information on the rollout. And I was 001 my time trial. And the car ran the fastest ever ran by like six numbers. So I was a little bit, uh, you know, I didn't trust that. So round <laughs> one, I 
carrying like four or five numbers just in case it slowed up. But uh, I got through first round, didn't have to buy back. So are you giving away your secrets? You like the hole that much? No, well, not really. You know, it depends on who I'm racing, really. But for the most part, I don't hold that much. Sometimes uh, yeah. some it up, keep them guessing. Yeah, you got to keep them guessing. That's right. If you're hanging out with Daddis, you're probably there ain't no telling what Daddis is going to do round yeah. and around. He probably doesn't know <laughs> until half the track. <laughs> but so you're you're rolling, you're rolling, you're rolling. When did it sit in that? you are deep in the million. Was it the split before then, or, or were you even thinking about it at all? Um, it, the split for sure. I, you know, I was trying my best to stay as present as I could in the moment, but I knew when I hit the split, man, I was, I was content no matter what that was, I was pumped. Obviously I want to win, but I was like, man, I made the split. Like, this is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> That's when it kicked in. Yeah, I understand that. I would have glad to be at least be at the split. I'm sure the split would probably be even more than anything I've ever won. You know, <laughs> I think I forget what it was. I think at the split you lost, you got like twenty thousand dollars there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was just a real feeling when each win like came on. It was like you know ten or twenty thousand more. It's like wow, this is crazy. So we're gonna fast forward to the final round. You are. Uh, so you win the no box side. Who'd you run in the no box side? I, I didn't even, I don't recall the no box final round. Who was the no box final? Was Michael Crass. He has a red Mustang from Kentucky. It's called the Kentucky okay. head nickname. Oh, wow. So I'm sure that was a tough, tough one then. You, you, you rolled through that. So you, you, you and Michael race. I'm assuming y'all ran the no box final round. And, right. and then you roll into the super pro side, electronic side. Is, is that how it typically works? Yeah, that's how it worked. Yep. Luckily, when the no box side, we were made the split and then in the electronic side, correct? Yeah. All right. So you stage on the final round. You look over in the final round. You see Sugar Shane over here in the final <laughs> round. One, of the, I'm going to tell you, I got my Sugar Shane shirt, by the way. I should have wore it, by the way. First thing I did when I got to the racetrack, I tracked down Kerry and I said, Where's my Sugar Shane shirt at? I need one. But uh, so I get my Sugar Shane shirt. But you, you, you look over in the lane. I mean, you've got Sugar Shane, uh, arguably one of the best bracket racers uh, also out there. But you're staging in the final round of the Million Dollar Drag Race. Was there any pressure or what's going through your mind at this point? I know you went through a little bit during your, your interview, and I know you said uh, you were a little tired. But kind of tell us a little bit, what was going through your mind? Yeah, well... I was definitely feeling the pressure. I was feeling pretty anxious. You know, I knew I was on a big stage. I, I really just didn't want to do anything stupid. You know, I was like, man, I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, go up there and let go 50 or, you know, I don't know. I was kind of just had those bad thoughts. So I, I was really, uh, I was feeling the pressure, but I was taking my time. You know, I was, I was doing my best to stay as present as I could in the moment. You know, I was kind of focusing on my breath, you know, just making sure every, I was doing everything right. You know, also, you know, you know, I think at that point, too, I was kind of in the zone. So there wasn't a, a ton of thoughts going on. Yeah. So I just did my thing, you know, and, uh, you know, just took my time. And, and, you know, honestly, when I left in that final round, it felt like it was one of those where it felt like it could have been red, you know, <laughs> and it stayed. So I, I, when I left, I, I was like clinched up you know i'm like oh that was red you know and then and then it dropped green i was like oh thank god like i want to, go, <laughs> want to put on a race for the first always it's always a good feeling in it when you think it's pink what do they call it pink you're like oh it's green yeah. it felt like it dude and then it stayed green i'm like oh it was perfect and uh <laughs> but, but and then at the same time my wind light came on and it was just surreal and what were you in the final right what was that I said he was double oh one red. I think people probably know. That's right. And what were you in the final round? I think you were double oh something, right? Oh five. Double oh five in the final round, right. So you crossed the finish line. Were you if you're like me, hey, were you I mean Dude, I, I'm guess let me guess before you even say that, I'm guessing if it were you from from my experience, you're probably like, It's cool. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I don't I wish I would have got, you know, part of me is like, What's wrong with you? But yeah, dude, I just I mean, there was definitely a lot of internal, uh, you know, I was pleased and, and, you know, but it was like, wow. 
no reaction. I understand that. Well, I really appreciate you being being humble, your humbleness. A lot of people appreciate that. A lot of people haven't had an opportunity to get to know your personality and who you are and uh, and that sort of thing. So I really appreciate you taking this opportunity to come out live for the viewers to really get to know you. So thank you. Uh, first of all, speaking of that, I'm, I'm assuming you're from Michigan. Is that that home, your hometown or yeah, is that I'm home? Michigan. Born and you're raised in Michigan. Born and raised in Michigan. That's and right. you raced at US 131 Motorsports yeah. Park, is that correct? Right. And I, I was hearing some rumors, double O Donnie. <laughs> as humble as you are, I'm sure you're like, gosh, I hate that. <laughs> yeah, because, you know, put a little target on your back. Everyone remembers you by that. But <laughs> Yeah, I remember I remember Dad is saying, and I'm going to be honest with you, prior to this race, I had not – I should do a better job keeping up with racing because it was almost like uh, – I was the only one that didn't know you. And Daddis was really talking highly of you and, and such. So that's great. Who took that yeah. photo, by the way? The photo. So first of all, that photo went viral. I don't know if you saw that or not. So I know you're probably hating me right now because you don't like attention, which I appreciate. You hate you hate attention. I'm learning but to I, appreciate. You're learning to appreciate that. Well, uh, well, I know you probably hate me now with all that, but almost 3.7 million, 4 million people uh, viewed the photo and 56,000 likes on drag coverage. So it's really great to see a, a weekend warrior get that kind of attention, especially in the big dollar world of bracket racing, you know? So it, it's, it, it really feels good for me to see the local guy. I consider you a local racer, really oh, good local racer, uh, get that kind of exposure. But who took that photo? The first photo I posted, you're sitting, it's, it's a picture of your Vega. You had a generator. And you had your open trailer in the background. Who took that photo? Yeah, then my neighbor, uh, Larry Stoker, a fellow Michigan racer who happened yeah. to be there. Yeah, he, uh, he, he, he hurt his motor on his car. He, he was there for the 50s, and he was helping me out all day when he could. Oh, Larry. Okay, Larry's the one. And did you run – Larry, is Larry the one that said he, you were going to run his entry on Sunday? You were driving for Larry yeah. on Sunday? Oh, I failed to mention that. That is another reason why I went down there because he had a entry into the last 50. He wasn't in the million and they were going to let me use that entry. So it was another reason to go, I suppose. That's right. Cause Larry, I ran into Larry in the winter circle and he was excited. <laughs> Larry's kind of chill too. Larry's kind of like you, like laid back. He's, yeah, like, yeah. He's like, yeah, Donnie, uh, I posted on Facebook that I wouldn't be running on Sunday and Donnie messaged me and, and he said uh, he's wanted to run to see if he could run my entry on Sunday. So I said, heck yeah. <laughs> but I remember him taking the, uh, that was a great picture. That picture yeah. went viral and also the one of you leaving. And uh, I captured that photo. I was very proud of that moment. I mean, I'm, I, I'm sitting there surprisingly still in the race on Sunday <laughs> I'm sitting next to uh, – actually, I'm parked next to Nasty Nick Hastings, one of the Nick, baddest no-box foot brake racers ever. He and I pit together all all weekend, by the way. Every round, Nick would say, you still in? <laughs> I'm like, yep, you still in? But every day, his thumb would stay longer than mine. <laughs> but uh, so I know. So everybody's passing by leaving, and I was like, oh, there's Donnie. I, like, I, I hit the <laughs> – Took a picture and I was like, I hope I got it. But uh, it was really great to see you see you leaving and and with the open trailer and the ship is it Silverado? Tell me about the truck. We'll start with the truck first. Is it a Silverado? What your model? It's just, oh, it is correct. Um, I got it back when I turned sixteen. Ever since I got my license, paid seven hundred dollars for it back in two thousand fourteen, and uh, it's been a it's been a trooper. It's got three hundred and fifty two thousand miles on it. And uh, it still runs great. Just the body's falling apart, you know. You up pay seven hundred all of the salt. Seven. Yeah, it had some issues as far as the brakes and, and stuff. The brake got contaminated. A couple of issues here and there, but we got a smoking deal on it. Yeah, seven. Wait, wait. You gave seven hundred dollars for it. Yeah, I paid seven hundred for it, and I had one hundred and seventy thousand miles at the time. So I put, you know, double from when I got it. Well, if you see a deal like that, let me know because I'm yeah, I'd love to run right. a deal for seven hundred bucks. I'll I'll give you seven hundred dollars for it today. <laughs> I might take and you so, up on it. 
so you got the Vega. The Vega, uh, we talked about it earlier. The Vega, it sounds, it, it was interesting. You win the million dollar drag race and we're celebrating, we're doing the champagne and uh, we, we kick you out of the winner's circle to take the next photo, but you fire, you jump in the Vega. Well, you're about to jump in the Vega and you left all your, you're leaving everything, your trophy, your check and everything. <laughs> you're literally, you're about yeah. to drive off. You're literally leaving everything in the back here and everybody's flagging you down to get everything. But you fire up the Vega and I'm expecting to hear this radical cam Vega and it, it barely, it sounds like a log truck motor. It it does, it does. Yeah, I, we uh, I blew the motor up in it last year, and my dad helped me put together a you know a low budget motor, and, and, it, and it doesn't have much uh, much into it, you know. But it does, it gets the job done. That's right. It yeah, it's it, just a backup. It's a backup a mild three eighty three on gas. Um, yeah, that's it. Well, so. This, I'm going to move into the next thing. I've got some questions to ask you, but uh, I've talked about your home track. And speaking of your, you say you're your dad. I want to talk a little, before I go into these questions, I want to talk a little bit about your dad and your family. Uh, I see yep. your dad. He asked one of the questions. Now, is your, dad, is your dad Gary or is that? That's my uncle, my dad's brother. Okay. Awesome. So, tell, so is it the entire family, racing family or? Um, not. Not too much. It's mainly just my dad, and uh, he has an uncle who who raced a little bit, or my great uncle raced a little bit, but mainly my dad. That's where I got right. it from. He's, he's so kind of a dad, first generation. Was he watching you live? Was he rooting you on, he texting was. you every round? Was you know fifth round? You know we're Eastern time up here, so it was an hour later than it was for us down there. So mm-hmm. I think it was fifth round. Like, man, I don't know if I can stay up any longer. I might just have to go to bed. <laughs> I won the no box final, and he's like, I got to stay up, you know. Oh, man, that's great. What's, so, he stayed, he had, so he stayed up and watched it. So he watched the entire thing to the end. That That's outstanding. Did he give you any words of advice or any words of wisdom throughout? What, did he tell you anything, or what did he tell you? Oh, man, he, he sent me a couple of texts just – you know, throughout the day, I'm trying to remember what they said, just, you know, little words of wisdom, just, you know, just, I I, God, I can't think of exactly, you know, just, you know, believe in yourself and, you know, you got this, you know, just anything a dad would say. That's great. Basically. I, yeah. My dad's usually the one to say, what was that, Donnie? What's that? I said, my dad's usually saying, my dad's usually saying, don't screw it up. Don't screw it up. Whatever you do, don't screw it up. <laughs> well, Donnie, I'm going to move to one of my favorite parts of the uh, of the show. It's the questions from the viewers. Uh, so before I even, uh, I wrote these down because there's no way in the world I can remember 100 questions, but I wanted everyone to ask you questions and and uh, so I'm going to start with the first question. So it's, it's quite a few questions. So I figured we better get started because we want to keep we don't we don't want to keep everybody on here too long. But I'm going to start for the first question. Are you ready? Uh, ready as I'll ever be. <laughs> and I think your 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 phone's glitching a little bit, but I think we're fine. I'm hearing your sound pretty good. You must be okay. in the backwoods. No cell phone service. And I'll be honest, I've had this phone since high school for about eight years, so it's probably time to upgrade. So you've had the phone eight eight years. Now, what kind of phone is it? Now I'm curious to know. I believe it's a it's either a five or a six. I want to say a six iPhone six. <laughs> iPhone six. <laughs> Come on, yeah. man. So you won the million dollar race. You still with an iPhone six? Yeah, still with that old truck too. You know, I think the money's probably cleared now. I could probably go and. <laughs> <laughs> no, I definitely understand. That's that's part of the questions here that somebody's going to ask you about is you get a new truck and all. So, so we'll start with the first question. All right. Yep. Uh Corky Alfred asked, "How intimidating is it pulling in, pulling into this big huge race in an open trailer and a tent? You didn't sleep in the tent, but you had it in the back seat just in case you need it compared to the right. big pile of rigs and the toter homes. How is it?" 
How intimidating is it? Um, for me, it wasn't intimidating at all because that's, that's just all I've known. Oh, geez, sorry. Okay. For me, it wasn't intimidating. You know, I'm a weekend warrior, so I'm used to it. I race, I race all the time, just not on the big stage. So it's a normal thing for me. You know, I've gotten pretty, you know, back in the day, it used to be a little intimidating, but I've just learned to accept that's who I am. Yeah. Definitely. Or that's, um, and, um, you know, I just focus on me. I'm not too worried about. You know, I just have faith that one day I will have, uh, some, you know, equipment like that, hopefully, if I just keep grinding and doing what I need to do. So it, it wasn't too intimidating for me. Very good answer. Just there. a little envious. Maybe a little envious. That's about it. <laughs> I think we all were pretty envious when we left there. Uh, we were following you out the gate in our, in our toters and motorhomes and behind your little open trailer and 350,000 mile truck. So, so yeah, that's right. So David Hansen asked, how hard was it to stay focused on cutting killer reaction times? No box racing, knowing all the others were using delay box. Well, you know, there's not much room for error. So, you know, I, I'm once again, I'm not too focused on them, but obviously I know that, uh, I have to do my job. You know, it, it makes me it makes me do my job better because you know, uh, there's no other options. I I have to have to be my best. It, it's it's not too not too challenging for me. I just I'm I'm doing my same thing. I'm focused on my spot, focused on what I have to do, and I'm not too worried about how they're they're leaving. But obviously, I'm aware that they have a little more tools than I have, so. Yeah. I know that I can't slack too much. So my favorite question out of all of these is, and I'm sure you've seen it from double O shit show. You ever heard of double O shit show? Oh yeah. <laughs> <Has it. laughs> you said, Oh yeah. So you haven't ended up on there. So congratulations. You haven't ended up on double O shit show, but uh double O shit show asked, did you go and buy a deluxe tent with your winnings? Yeah, I did. I did. You know, I got rid of that Walmart tent and got a bigger <laughs> one. No. No. <laughs> yeah, they always crack me up, but no, no tent upgrade yet. I'll admit, I uh, I send them some stuff. I'm not going to tell you what I send them, but I always send, I don't always, but I've sent double O shit show some stuff. And I'm a little disappointed. They didn't post the picture of Gary Williams busting it on the ground. He literally breaks the chair, falls backwards. I didn't take the picture. Jason Folk took it. And he goes, TJ, send this to Double O Shit Show. <laughs> and so it was it's a right. picture of a doughboy and Gary Williams laid out, but it never made it. So if they're listening, hopefully uh we can see that one make it. Uh yeah, where'd that happen at? It was at the it was in the staging lanes during the million, actually. Uh, I think it was in the million or either that, that, that Saturday. But yeah, I'll have to send you the picture. <laughs> You have to. So great question by Craig Johnson. He wants to know a piece of advice for the tens of thousands of Brack racers out there with similar setups as you uh, that you own who dream of accomplishing what you have accomplished. What's some advice that you can give give uh, us yeah. racers? That was a hard one because there's so many different answers or, you know, there's no one perfect answer for that. But, you know, I would say I would say the first step is showing up, giving yourself a chance. Uh you know, that's what I did. I was pretty nervous, you know, about going, but, uh, you know, I, I went, I knew I couldn't win watching or not going. So I showed up and, uh, for me, you know, obviously having a good car is a big part of it, but for me, it's a uh, mental. So a big part of my game is, uh, you know, is, uh, staying really present in the moment and, and no distractions and just, you know, I'm pretty introverted. So I, I try to just keep to myself and, and stay mentally aware of at all times. So, uh, that's, I honest, honestly, you know, at the million, I was really focused on that. I was really like, let me, you know, I got to stay present. I can't let my mind wander. I got to stay 
you know, I was like forcing myself to stay present in the moment. And, um, you know, after a while of doing that, you eventually, you know, for me, I find, you know, like my flow state and things just start to click without any, it's just weird. It's a weird place to be, but it, so, you know, you know, a lot of it for me too is, that, you know, I had no distractions, you know, I was there by myself. I didn't have to cater to anybody. And, uh, you know, not saying that that's a bad thing to have family or, or, or you know, significant others there, but I, I was solely focused on me and no one else. And, uh, but, you know, it, it takes everything, you know, it takes being there, it takes luck. Um, it, you know, you got you got to really want it. I would say too, you got to, you know, I'm pretty obsessed, you know, with racing and winning and, you know, I, it takes a lot, it takes everything. That's awesome. It's interesting. You talk about being focused and staying focused. Uh, I really learned yeah. a lot park parking next to nasty Nick Hastings. Um, yes. here I am. My- I make a pass. What was that? I said, he's my hero. I've always looked up to him. Oh man. Incredible racer on and off the track. One of the greatest yeah. personalities. I mean, he's the same every time. Really a lot of respect for nasty Nick Hastings, but I par- learned a lot. Uh, learned a lot with him. I'd make up. I would make a pass. I jump on my scooter and I'm all over the place talking to everybody. Nasty Nick. He makes a pass. Goes to his trailer. Focus. Concentrates. So I, I I really agree with you when it comes to distractions and staying focused. So that's great answer on that. One. Uh, I'm assuming Jeffrey Fisher says, "Are you going to the uh, Montgomery 500K?" Man, I wish, but uh, I qualified for the world finals for the WDRA in Darlington. It's the same weekend. Oh, you know, okay. it's 20,000 to win, and there's probably only going to be like 30 cars in my class, and I get a free entry, you know, and you get 500 guaranteed to show up. But so I think I have to go to that, but you know, I'm going to miss 500K. So it's kind of a well, tough tr- one. Do you think your truck would make it to the 500K? <laughs> well, <laughs> I don't know. Might break in half halfway. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, oh. but uh, also a 11 hour drive for me. So, yeah. I got to figure so, out. So, look for a truck. Joe Wright says, Donnie Hager, did you learn anything from the old goat in the background? I didn't, I don't remember saying it. Who, uh, who are they referring to in the background? referring to Larry, the guy uh, who was my neighbor, who, you know, got me in the Saturday 50K. Oh, so that was Larry um, in the background? What's that? Yeah, that guy. The guy you talked yeah. to. Larry. Yeah. Yeah, he, uh, what I learned from him, well, he had, he had uh, some brothers there, and I guess I learned what family was all about. They seemed like very good people, and they stayed up the entire time. Didn't have to, and you know they were helping me. You know, shine a light, put fuel in the car. Just you know, you know he was just a helping hand and a really good dude, and so was his brothers. So Matthew Smith has the next question. He says the truck for sale. I've already asked for the truck. I'm telling you right now, no <laughs> Matthew Smith. We're gonna skip to the next one. I've already asked for the truck. All right. I've got first dibs on the truck. Okay, uh, truck's mine. All right. <laughs> so and. uh Speaking of the truck, I'm going to skip one uh, while we're talking about the truck. Are you going to upgrade the truck? Yes or no? People, the world wants to know. The Silverado, are you upgrading the Silverado? Yeah, I plan on it for sure. I'm (laughs) I'm thinking newer truck, maybe not brand new, but pretty new and enclosed trailer for sure. Next step for me. All right. Enclosed open trailer, guys. Ditch him. We're done with Donnie. He's not representing us open trailer guys anymore. We're done with you, Donnie. You're a trader. You're going to an enclosed trailer. You're a trader. I know. No, so I'll keep the I'll keep the open for rare occasions. All right, deal. Man, we got to get you a phone too. Please speak. You you're gonna up, you got to upgrade the phone before you get a truck and a trailer. You got to upgrade the phone. You're freezing really bad. So we're gonna get you a new phone, right? <laughs> up on your end. No, we're good. It's good. It's freezing a little bit, but you're good. Um, I, I just want to make sure truck, phone, and enclosed trailer. Yeah. Phone, phone first, to... truck, and then enclosed trailer. Is that right? 
Yeah, that's correct. <laughs> that's correct. So uh, Diane asked Bodmer, uh, Diane, I apologize if I'm, I'm messing up or screwing up your name. She asked, are you considering putting a box in your car or are you going to continue old school kicking butt and no box? Yeah, I don't see myself ever using a delay box. Never say never, but I've always been off the bottom. I've uh, never, I've never used a delay box, and I, you know, I, I practice occasionally at home. And I don't know. I feel like I'm not that. I feel like I'm just better off the bottom. Yeah. I don't. I kind of okay. like the underdog role too. To be honest, if I'm being honest, you know, I feel like, you know, uh, technically I'm not supposed to win. Maybe you know, I don't know. I kind of like that role. I think I'm glad you brought that up. You're opening up a can here. I'm glad you brought that up. I'm starting to think the no box racers are not underdogs because the next day, Lucas Walker just plain kicked my butt. I'm 003 and in the way, and he's no box racer. You know, Lucas Walker's a bad dude. I'm like, oh, yeah. Y'all ain't, you, I'm, you guys are no underdogs no more. No box racers are kicking butt, man. I'm telling you what, Lucas loaded me up. I'm like, Jeez, I'll tell you what, I'm running a no box racer. I'm pulling numbers out the box. Give me a box racer any day. I'll race a box right. racer any day before no box. All yeah, right. somebody so, was telling me that, somebody was telling me that maybe I should run the side, you know, because and you know, Nick Hastings, Lucas Walker, Andy Small, they're like, you know, you might be better off getting in the box side, but <laughs> yeah. I got fortunate for that not that no box is so tough. I agree with you. Uh, I remember that. Speaking of that, um, I was racing Wednesday night. Gulfport Dragway has the coolest bracket program on Wednesday night. And uh, I lucked my way into winning the Super Pro side. I thought I won the race. And Galen Rollison comes up and he says, no, Wednesday night is Comp Eliminator, where the Super Pro combines with the no box racers. And we, we crown one winner. I said, no big deal. I said, no big deal. I run a no box racer get my butt kicked by no box racer. So I have my record against no box racers is really bad right now. So uh, you guys are no underdog. <laughs> so we got a couple other questions here. Uh, can you hear me? Or did I lose you? He's getting adjusted. Yeah. I like my battery. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I did. I can. You see your battery. Yeah, I had it charged, but I'm not charging it right now. I was trying to check it and see where it's at. All right, sweet. It's got a few other questions here. Gary, Gary Hagar. Does that name sound familiar? Yeah, it does, Uncle. <laughs> Are you going to compete in this race next year? Absolutely. Have to. Great. Have to, right? I agree. You gotta get that repeat. First no box race winner to win two. Uh, going bracket racing. So my friends that go in bracket racing, I love going uh, bracket racing. Great show, great guys that run that show. I love tuning in to the to, tuning in to them. What round was the hardest round of eliminations on the way to on the way to the final round? Yeah, so on paper it has to be the semifinals. Mikey Bluefield Jr. was nine total on me, and I had to get inside of that, but. That definitely was, but I honestly mentally the toughest for me was like uh, against Lucas Walker or Andy Small in the third and fourth round of of the race. I was feeling a little uh, not super confident. I felt a little unsure of myself, and those were like really hard rounds for me mentally. But the semifinals was, I guess, probably the toughest because, you know, he was 006, dead three. I was 004, dead zero. And I picked the right time to step it up because, like, the last four or five rounds before that, I was in the teens and 20s, you know, barely escaping by. And I turned my uh, – cranked the launch RPMs up a little bit there in the semis. Oh, awesome. And you beat the drag coverage car, so I won't hold uh, that again. I know. That was a killer round, I though. Know. Nine Mikey was 9 thou package total. Great racer. Great job to Mikey and the drag coverage team. But you laid down a killer run in the semis. So that may have been one of the toughest 
uh, rounds of the the million. Uh, a couple other, Darren Hunter. How do you have reaction times like that? Unreal job, man. Nothing but props. You deserve this. So these last two were from our Instagram. And so you didn't have time to prepare. I'm assuming you didn't get on the Instagram. I didn't. But how do you have reaction times like that, man? Unreal. Props. You deserve this. (laughs) Well, I didn't think they were super great in the middle of the race, but uh, I appreciate that. I, uh, like I said, I think I was double O four, four rounds out of 10, you know, a 10 round race. So, but, uh, basically I started at night. I tend to slow down just a little bit and I was in the teens and twenties pretty consistently in the teens, high teens. And like I said, in the semis, I'm like, this isn't going to keep working. I got to do something different. So I, uh, I turned to launch up 200 RPM and hit the same spot and I really didn't know I was that good in the semis honestly I thought maybe I was like 15 and I was 004 and then in the final like I said I thought maybe I was red and I was below five so I mean it you know it uh just you know luck and just hitting my spot trying And this brings us up to the final question, not the final question for me, but the final question from our viewers here. And I think probably one of the most important questions uh, here. And uh, I really like this question. Sheila Lee asked, um, I know earlier you talked about um, giving advice for racers that have the same equipment as you, less fortunate. But Sheila has a slightly different question. What is the most important lesson for young drivers that you can give? Oh, wow. Hmm. Whew, that's a good question. <laughs> I might need a second. Yeah, come on. So I didn't give you time to prepare for this one. I was going to. Yeah, so she asked it on her Instagram. Instagram. For young drivers. So you got a lot of racers coming up through the junior dragster ranks. Uh, you know, or may not have raced at all. Yeah. What what's some what's some things to to give or, or to help you out? What are some things you've done? You've saved up. You bought a seven hundred dollar truck. What are some things That's from right. your childhood? What what has helped you from your childhood to get where you are coming from a kid? Because how old are you, Donnie? I'm twenty five. You're twenty five. So, yeah. what are some advice that you can give somebody coming from their teens? Uh, uh, now that's some lessons from young drivers yeah well so many i would you know uh you know success probably a lot of seat time that's what i did you know i started at the local races and just i think seat time is it means a lot you know that's how i got better and gained more confidence more laps down the track but you know for me i live i kind of live under my means you know i try to make it work you know, with what I had and not, you know, uh, yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> no, I think oh, you asked, caught you off guard there. Yeah. No, I think those are all great things, bit. though. I th- think those are all great things, though, because, I mean, everybody starts, a lot of people start from nothing. And I'm assuming what age did you start racing at? When did you start racing? When I was 16, and ironically enough, I started racing my truck when I was 16 the whole year. Wait, the and, truck that uh, you're driving now, yeah. that's what you started racing? Where? Yeah. Wow. So yep. you didn't start in Junior Dragster? No. And so you no. bought the truck for $700 and you started racing it at age 16 yourself? That's right. And I believe I was in 10 final rounds that year, 2014, you know, a lot of them in street class, yeah. but, uh, couple, uh, I had a couple no box finals with it. I remember I won like $1,200 one night in it. Oh, <laughs> uh, so that, that truck may have some sentimental value to you. Apologize. I'm going to move just a bit and go to the charger. Oh yeah. I definitely understand. So, hold on. I think that's pretty interesting, though. I really think it's interesting that you 
I had no idea. First of all, that's very impressive that you literally, you started racing by a truck you spent $700 to buy and that was your truck. So I'm assuming it was your truck and then you turned it into your tow vehicle. How many years later? Um, next year, year or two, I got a, I ended up getting a, uh, firebird. So a street car, I think, like a 13 I think second, I saw car, the eight second car. Yeah. So, yep. Started out in the truck and then the next year's got a firebird. All right. And then when did you get, when did you get the Vega? Got the Vega 2021, uh, there for a couple of years, I drove for other people. Uh, and, uh, you know, in the Firebird still, but so I've had the Vega for a couple of years now. That's awesome, man. Well, man, I'm really incredibly proud of you because it's, you know, I've told you that in the winter circle, what an incredible opportunity. And I think everybody, uh, got emotional. At least I did Any, anyway. I said the first ever no box winner in the history of drag racing to win a million dollar drag race, any million, especially the OG million. So I'm super, very proud of you. And at this time, I mean, the floor is, I, I, we've asked you a lot of questions and, and I, this is very, 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 very great to hear. It, it does for the young racers, this gives them hope. You spent $700 on the truck, you raced the truck, right. you win money. You didn't, you didn't start in junior dragsters. You worked your way up. Nope. Save, save, get the Firebird, get the the Vega. You win the million dollar drag race, but you can't. Right. You couldn't have done it alone. I mean, you've got several people to nope. thank. I'm sure. Oh, that's right. Yeah, you know, my dad was a big part of it growing up. You know, or you know, as as early as I can remember, is being at the racetrack, and you know, you know, going with him is is where it all started. And uh, I've had a fire in me ever since I was young. And, you know, watching his passion for the sport, you know, is is a big reason to where I am today, you know. So he, you know, he's, uh, if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be where I am today. You know, he's the one who's really mechanically inclined, who helps me out, you know, and is the one who got me involved. So, but yeah, a lot of people have helped. You know, this year I also um, I joined a racing team, a Phil Deer racing team. He uh, puts you know some sponsors together on the side of my car, and you know, kind of just makes it possible, you know, to uh, you know race affordably. So. Yeah, I remember I saw that I saw that on your team. That's pretty cool. He was keeping everybody posted. He was super excited for you, so that was great, to, great to see. And That's I really cool. do hope this turns into. Hope you get a lot more opportunities to uh, get sponsorships and really increase your racing just because you represent a lot and you give a lot of people hope. So I really hope and you really do. You really do. You encourage a lot of us and, and whether you know it or not. And I really appreciate you being humble, but you have really given a lot of young racers, a lot of racers that don't have a lot hope that they can actually do it. I think you gave the biggest piece of advice that I've seen is. And I have to remind myself, too, that you can't win unless you show up. You know, that's right. these racers, there are a lot of tough racers out there that race every weekend. They are tough, but you can't compete with those racers if you don't show up. And the only way to win or to give yourself a chance is to show up. So I think that that's one thing I'm taking from this. That I've really learned a lot uh, myself. So thank you, Donnie. And thank you from, from me. Thank you from the drag racing community. Thank you from the racers that 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 have lost hope uh so thank you for encouraging everyone to do better you know to to get out there and race that's right so, absolutely wow now you're up on my end <laughs> i'm frozen on your end i can see you though that's the main thing so but uh, yeah I, yeah I, but i appreciate the kind words i appreciate the platform man you know it's uh it's still so surreal and I'm glad that I, I give people hope because that's true. If I did it, anybody can do it. It's possible. It's uh, you just got to put your mind to it and keep fighting. It isn't going to work out every single time, but if you keep trying hard, hard and keep going consistently, eventually you're going to, you're going to break through and find a win. Absolutely. 
So thank you, Donnie. But before I close out, we're running out of time here, man. Donnie, I really appreciate you joining us again today. Is there anything that we forget anything that we, or did you forget to thank anybody? Because don't be kicking yourself after this is over and saying, oh my gosh, I forgot to thank so-and-so. Because uh, is there anything yeah. that we forgot or anything you want to add? And, and the, the floor is yours. Well, I probably should give a shout out to my mom too. She stayed up and watched the entire time and she's been a big support too as well all the time, encouraging me to go and chase after my dreams and, you know, really trying to push me to, you know, push me and, and knew that I was capable of a big win. So she's a, a big help as well. So definitely, you know, just my parents, obviously, fam family, friends, thank everybody. And, uh, that's it. I'm well, sure Donnie, getting... well, congratulations on being the first ever no box winner at a million dollar race. And congratulations on being the first ever guest on the drag coverage show with TJ. So you got two big wins well, first... there. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, this is the first time we've ever done this. I've been kicking this idea around for quite a while. And so you're the first ever guest. So uh, excited about that. Oh, you you kicked it off. Well, thank you. This is awesome. this isn't as big as the million dollar win, but we uh, we really appreciate you joining us. But we've ran out of time. I really appreciate you joining us today. I know you're not one to step in front of the camera, and I know this was a lot for you. But thank you for joining us today, Donnie. Thank you, TJ. I appreciate you, and I look forward to seeing you next year at the same race. All right. Hopefully, I'll see you before then. But good luck at the WDRA WDRA World Finals, and uh, I'll text you and see how you're doing. Ladies and gentlemen, Absolutely. give it up for Donnie. Well, thanks, Donnie. I appreciate it, man. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I think I cut him off, so Donnie's probably going to be kicking me. But ladies and gentlemen, that was Donnie Hager, uh, our first ever guest. Uh, a lot of good, really good advice that Donnie gave us. So thank you all for tuning in with us live today. Um, super excited to see what this young, driven racer really has in store as he continues to grow his career drag racing. So a uh, great interview from Donnie today. And I really want to thank everybody for tuning in. Uh, like I mentioned before, this is our first show. It's my first show, the drag coverage show. So uh, please shoot us an email, drag coverage at gmail.com or message us on Facebook or Instagram. If you have any ideas, suggestions, or want to be a guest on the show. This is our first show, so we're open for any kind of suggestions. So thanks, everybody, for tuning in. This was awesome. I've had a lot of fun today. This was great. I think I'm, I'm loving this, this, this show and the platform, the podcast going live. I'm really enjoying this. I was wondering if I would really like it. So I think you're going to see more of us here at the Drag Cover Show, more of me and some more guests. But again, thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Uh, give it up for Donnie Hager and... Uh, We'll see you guys at the racetrack. Thanks again.